it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. And much love to the Empowered Harmonizers. We're zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth in terms of understanding really like what is the parasitic nature of someone who is psychopathic or sociopathic. What does that mean? Basically it means that they are um, taking a form of energy from you, either your time, your attention most likely. That's, you know, where your, where your attention goes, your energy flows. So if you are caught up in, um, ten, you know, constantly attending to them, that's how they break down one's boundaries, is that they want you to be constantly thinking about them, even when you should be focusing on other things, like your work, um, your family, um, your future, um, your, your health, these kind of things. So they're gonna try to be very interruptive and distracting and then they know that they're overtaxing you or, or, you know, pushing you or overwhelming you. But the issue with these types of individuals is they tend to take a pleasure with overwhelming people. Um, and it's not just like a healthy challenge. It's a very sort of um, uncomfortability, but yet it's oftentimes tinged with love or excitement for this person so it's hard to set, sort out the feelings. And so you, you don't recognize, you're not consciously aware that it's happening because it takes place slowly over time. You know, let me drive your car. Um, let me text you through all hours of the night. Let me send you these pictures. Um, you know, I'll, I'll break my uh, dates with my friends or my children for you. So they show you these sacrifices and expecting you to make the same. And you're oftentimes finding them, maybe you're giving them help with their work or their family, or you're falling into the sab, uh, the sab story that they oftentimes use to manipulate their victims. So, um, this parasitic nature oftentimes then is so ingrained and is part of the relationship that you have a guilt or a difficulty separating yourself from it because you feel that this is like, what you're required to do, this ultimate sacrifice. Um, keeping yourself going at all hours, keeping a crazy schedule, overworking, trying to overplease them, you know, working out too much, shopping too much, spending too much. You find your credit cards, you know, you've had to take care of their groceries or their dinner or their car or their car insurance, you know, or giving them a place to live. Um, and this happens at all different levels in the viewership. Um, and the thing is, it can off, the parasitic nature can come oftentimes in the form of gifts that they give you. So these little gifts that normally you would not think of getting for yourself, they get for you. So they have this special kind of manipulation in the gifts. It's, it's oftentimes very um, nostalgic or meaningful. So it always kind of gets your attention in an interesting way. And you feel sort of, um, you feel so obligated to give back and this becomes the chain or you know cycle of, of debting to somebody where you have you feel like you have to give to them um, and it becomes but you don't realize that you know you're giving all the while but you're not able to see what you're giving of yourself they have things so diluted and duped in the relationship um, and if you really look at the sacrifices you've made you really do need to take stock of this in your recovery journal and incorporate this into your lessons learned because you can actually clearly see for yourself what you've done and then it's reflected back at you. And nothing better is than in your own handwriting. If you type it out, it tends to have kind of an objective feel to it. Whereas if you handwrite it in a notebook, you tend to relate to the energy of the notebook better than like an electronic tablet or a computer. So when we talk about your recovery pages or your lessons learned, you need to have it written down and you need to review those and you need to have them be lessons learned, i.e. not to be repeated, not mistakes to be repeated because as we know, this can take you know months and years off of your life in a healthy focus. Um, so you don't need to be a host to this parasitic type of relationship. It is not required. That is not what love requires. Love is freer. Love is more liberating. Love has boundaries. It's okay to say no. It's okay to pull back 
not out of resistance, but out of self-care. You know, and so that self-care really needs to kick into, into place. So you're able to kind of feel that as a priority. Oftentimes people, they then put in care of others first before, you know, care of themselves. So it gets really out of whack, out of balance. And that plays with your emotional chemistry and your decision-making process. And really then how you view your future, it's oftentimes very difficult. Once people have gotten into that overwhelmed or over-obligated or parasitic, it's very hard to pull back and get balance for your life and then feel good and positive about making plans because you're not used to it and it feels like you're doing something wrong. You know, you're being selfish or you'll lose their love. I think that's the main thing is that people are so fearful of losing the love of others if they take care of themselves. But true love will be liberating. True love will be freeing. True love will rejoice in your self-care and not be threatened by it because it's the covert narcissist, you know, that, that tends to try to control that when it actually is under your control. To your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.